Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 5 under the category steady state error. And the problem is a unity feedback system has the forward transfer function and this is the function. The input R of T is equal to 1 plus 60 is applied to the system. Determine the minimum value of K1 if the steady state error is to be less than 0.1. Here the value of G of S is given and the type of feedback is unity feedback and the value of R of T is given here. Right. We are asked to find the value of K1. Here when you look at this G of S, this K1 is a constant, right? Here they are asking us to find the value of K1 provided they have given the steady state error should be less than 0.1. That is they are giving steady state error and they are asking us to find a constant value which is present in G of S. Right? So the first thing is what is the formula for steady state error? It is given by limit t tends to infinity into E of t. Another form of steady state error is limit s tends to 0 s into e of s right so what is the formula for e of s so e of s is given by r of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s here the value of r of t is given but what we need is r of s therefore we need to take laplace transformation so when you apply laplace transformation you see Laplace transformation of R of T becomes R of S and Laplace transformation of 1 is 1 by S and this T becomes 1 by S square. So here we are having 6. So we are writing it as 6 by S square. The next thing is we know the value of R of S, G of S and H of S. So we have to substitute. So when you substitute here, we are getting an expression like this, right? So this is the value of R of S. And this is the value of G of S. Since it is a unity feedback system, the value of H of S becomes 1 here. Right. The next step is we have to take LCM for the denominator part. So when you take LCM, this 1 will get multiplied with, the, with these terms. So when you multiply, you are getting an expression like this. Right. And the next step is I am going to move this denominator to the numerator side. So what happens when you move the denominator to the numerator, we have to take reciprocal. So that is our next step. Here you see this 1 by s, 1 by s, I am moving this term to the numerator. So I am taking reciprocal of this term. You see here this denominator becomes numerator and this numerator becomes denominator. Right. Similarly plus again 6 by s square. So 6 by s square. Again and when I move this denominator term, I am having, I am getting this expression like this right so what is our next step the formula is limit s tends to 0 s into e of s so here we are having e of s expression and this expression should be multiplied with this yes right so the next step i am going to multiply with the yes so here you see this is this is our e of s expression and this expression is multiplied with yes Right. The next step is I am going to move this S yes inside each term. So when I move here you see this S yes into 1 by S right. S yes into 1 by S and this expression and this S and S yes cancels each other. Right. Similarly when I move S yes for the second term you see here I am having S yes into S yes, so S square. So this S square and this S square get cancelled. Right. So again the next step is we have to apply the limit s tends to 0. So when we apply s tends to 0 here you see I am having an s here right. So s is 0. So 0 multiplied by anything is 0 and again 0 divided by anything is 0 right. Here you can have a question why we, why we can't cancel this s and this s. Because we can't do that because here you see we are having two terms in addition. They are not in multiplication. Right. So never do this mistake. So this is our yes when you substitute 0 here. So 0 multiplied by anything is 0. So again 0 divided by whatever may be the number the final answer is 0. So this expression the first term of this expression reduces to 0. Right. So when we apply 0 to this second term you see 0 plus 1 
and again 1 plus 0 the whole square divided by you see when you substitute s equal to 0 what happens so 0 into this part so this entire term reduces to 0 so 0 plus again k1 into 0 plus 1 right so when you simplify here the steady state error is given by here you are having 6 and 1 into 1 becomes 1 and here k1 into 1 becomes k1. So, we are having 6 by k1, right. So, the next thing is we are asked to find the value of k1 and they had given the value of steady state error. So, we can directly substitute here. So, when you substitute, you see what they had given the value of steady state error should be less than 0.1. What is the value of steady state error? It is 6 by k1. So, just substitute here. So, now we are moving these two terms, we are interchanging. So, k1 is moving to this side and point 1 is coming this side. So, 6 divided by point 1 is less than k1. So, 6 divided by point 1 is nothing but 60. So, 60 is always less than k1. In other words, the value of k1 is always greater than 60. Right? Hope you people understand this. Because, the 60 is less than k1. What it means? That is k1 is always greater than 60. So, whenever the value of k1 is greater than 60, during that time you will have the value of steady state error less than 0.1. Right? Hope you people understand. Thank you.